Hey everybody! So, okay, we're here to do another art journal page in the Delusions book because of course we're trying to finish it up. If I do one every day this week, I can actually get it done this week. Yay! <sighs> Maybe if I can get two done one day this week, I can get it done before the weekend. That would be double yay. Alright, so for this next page, I started last night to try to get a little bit ahead just collaging down some Tim Holtz tissue paper onto both pages. I didn't feel like you guys needed to see that because y'all know how to collage. Just use a little bit of collage glue, matte medium, liquid matte medium or something, glue the paper down, smooth it out with an old gift card, there you have it. This morning, before I turned the camera on, I did give all the edges a trim, but other than that, it's just tissue paper on my pages, that's it. My inspiration for this page today is this Christmas card. Now this card is one of last year's Christmas cards. And we have these friends, Joe and Kathy Yeomans, and every year Kathy gives me a interesting Christmas card in the mail. Every year, something really interesting about the graphics on the front of her cards. This year, she last year she sent me this one. I love this card. We're gonna use it actually it in the art journal page, but we're gonna use it as inspiration for what we're gonna do to the page too. I've got some ideas. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna fast forward and I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay guys, there is another art journal page. I love the way this turned out. I, I love the way this turned out. If, you, if you're going to do something like this and you wanted to, the only thing I would suggest is I like the way the text is over here, but if you wanted to have that show up more and the tree show up more, then you might want to do a light wash of gesso over the collage paper before you do anything else. I didn't want that. I like the fact that Although I can read the quote, it also adds to the texture and interest in the background at the same time. And just, I, I love the way the composition looks. The quote says, Snow falling soundlessly in the middle of the night will always fill my heart with sweet clarity. And I put the name of the um, person who said it or wrote it on the bottom. I can't not pronounce the name. Novala Takamoto? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's something I found on the internet that I love. Um, and I'm sure you're expecting me to say, have a nice day and all that stuff. Uh, well, I'm not going to. I'm going to show you how to do something really quick. This journal page is going to have a little quick mini tutorial in it. So, before we get started, we're going to move this. And I am going to grab one of my scrap pieces of um, paper up here. This is just some leftover watercolor paper from a project... I think I did I did some book binding or something. I had all these like long huge strips that I was going to throw away and I thought, you know, why don't I cut them into little cards? They're about four by six. And I'm going to show you on this one how to do a tree because I just did a fast forward, but I'm going to show you how to do a really easy, simple tree. Let me get some brown paint. Actually, let me use black because that'll show up best on camera. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And I have a round brush, and I need my rag, there we go, and I need something to put my paint in. We'll use this palette. So the easy way to do a brush is to use some sort of thin paint or ink. So I like golden fluid acrylics, but there's lots of acrylic inks out there. You could thin down some regular heavy body acrylic paint, but you want something that's sort of an ink consistency because that'll just make your job a lot easier doing these trees. I'm going to, and I'm using a round brush. This is a round number, it looks like nine. This isn't just an artist loft brush. I'm rolling the tip of my brush in the paint. Can you see that? Okay. I'm going to turn my card just a little bit because I'm right handed and it makes the job a little easier. So I'm going to start at the bottom at the trunk. And I'm going to work my way up to the tree. As I'm painting, I'm turning the brush in my fingers. Can you see that? That's giving me a uneven line. This is a tree. You don't want an even line. Trees are not even in nature. And when I come out to do the branches, I'm going to keep turning. And as I get to the end of the branch, I'm lifting my brush up so it's barely touching the paper. And those oopses like that, that just needs to be a branch there. No oopses in, in art. They're just opportunities for creativity. So you just keep going, turning and lifting, dipping in your paint till you have your tree looking the way you want. in the trunk. And take a look at it. And if I was doing this for real on a journal page, I'd want this a little thicker up here. That's better. And then as I did the one in the art journal page, I added snow 
to the branches where the snow would rest in the branches. So if it was really falling, I'm in California, so I have to imagine if it was snowing, where would the snow stick in the tree? So it would stick in all the nooks and crannies, right? So that's where I put the white paint uh, to mimic the snow. And I let that dry, and then I went in with some red berries, red dots with the Posca pen to make red berries. So I hope that gives you some idea. Practice some trees. They're really easy. You don't have to use Golden Fluid Acrylics. Use what you have. If you have some inks or some regular acrylic craft paint that you need to, you know, just water it down until it's the consistency sort of like this. Very watery and kind of inky, okay? And that'll make doing your trees a lot easier. Give it a try. See what you think. Have a great week. Have a great day and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and I'll see you later.